for giving me the space to share my journey. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to help you maybe figure out what you, how you can design a life that is based on your values, that is based on your purpose, um, without having the constant illusion um, of achieving this, this work-life balance. So in, in, as you can see with the title, I, I don't really believe that it exists. So for the next 30 minutes, I would like to invite you to join me on a quick journey um, that has involved um, vulnerability, courage, uh, self-compassion and self-reflection and reinvention. And my, my hope is really that I will give you some tools and uh, some practices that I learned along the way that have worked for me. So let's get right to it because we don't have a lot of time. So for the, um, share, and Magda already talked about me and shared um, my information. So you can go ahead, um, Magda, and go. Um, we're not gonna be able to do the texting um, because um, Magda is sharing the screen and I don't have the capability to do that. So I apologize for the technology. Magda, you can go ahead. Um, I, I was going to ask you a few silly questions about how is it going to be, you know, trying to separate and balance work and life, um, just to, you know, make a point about how impossible that is. But we're gonna move right ahead. If you can um, uh, go two or three more slides, Magda, please. Yep, one more. Yeah, so um, today I'm going to be sharing um, my journey over the past, you know, maybe four to six years. Uh, the previous one, please. Um, over the past four to six years when um, I really thought I had it all figured out and I, um, you know, hold on. Can you go one less? Oh, sorry. This is the first time this is happening to me, so I'm gonna be self-compassionate with myself. And, and um, okay, so before I go into my own process, um, I, I wanna share with you some of the definitions that I found, and it was just reflecting on the work, uh, preparing for this presentation that I, you know, I realized that even before um, I knew what burnout was, I had heard about work-life balance, and in every panel discussion, every book, every, you know, mentoring relationship, everybody was talking about it. And it seemed to be this goal, right? This idea that was the ideal to have a happy career, to have a, um, a successful career was to have this work-life balance. So um, every leadership development program I heard, I talked to, or, you know, leaders, women leaders particularly, they would always be asked this question of how to achieve this life balance. So I found these definitions um, in Google that kind of confirm a little bit about what, you know, what, what they said, right? And I highlighted a few things here because to me, as I read them and as I hear all the leaders talking about it, I continue thinking and believing that it doesn't really exist. And why? Well, because first of all, because it assumes that really work is not part of your life. Um, so that they are separated somehow. Um, it assumes to you that you don't like your work because if you look at the first definition, it it, see, it says says something. I can't see it completely in my in my phone, but it talks about you know having a balance between your job and between your family and doing the things you enjoy. So it assumes that you kind of hate your job or you don't like it, which is also to me not true, at least in my case. Um, it also you know assumes that things can be compartmentalized, right? So you can kind of leave things at home and not take them to work or, you know, vice versa. And of course that doesn't happen and it hasn't happened over the past two years, even more. So to me, again, as I reflect on this, it just doesn't exist. Work is part of your life and you have to be intentional about how you're designing your life. So work, is aligned with your values, with your purpose, with your priorities, and the, with the way that you want to live your life. So that is what I want to invite you to um, hear me out, maybe get inspired, and maybe get some tools. So now if you can go to the next, um, 
Mark that, please. So um, today I would like to share my journey over the past maybe four to six years when um, I realized that really um, I couldn't achieve work-life balance. And what at that time I thought it was, you know, it was a failure. Really, um, it was this very unreachable goal, very unreachable and realistic expectation of balance and perfection. And if I kept trying to do that, I realized that I was going to live forever frustrated and happy, angry, um, not a full life as I wanted to live. And I wouldn't even be alive today. Um, sometimes I think about that too. So um, about four to six years ago, actually about four years ago this May, um, I decided to um, abruptly quit my job, um, what I thought it was the perfect job, the perfect life. So these are the lessons that I learned along the way um, and that I continue learning every day. So uh, this is kind of my process and the way that I, I did it, um, not in this quite so neat circle that I created after a while about this. Um, this is kind of how the practices came along um, but some of them were messy. Some of them we overlapped. Some of them were happening at the same time. This has been the result of more self-reflection and more reinvention that I created this this kind of cycle. So I want to share with you this four um, these four practices that I learned. So maybe they can be helpful for you. Uh, um, next, please. So the first practice um, is courage. And as I alluded um, in the slide before. Uh, four to six years ago, I thought I thought that I had what uh, a lot of people and even me thought it was the perfect job, the perfect life, um, a great corporate job, um, making good money. I just we just bought a car. We were traveling a lot. We were eating outside. We were having um, money to spend in clothing and experiences. You name it, right? What in general you think it's a very successful life. However, um, a little bit after I started my job, I realized that I every Sunday morning I was having panic attacks and I was waking up at 3 a.m. Uh, telling myself that I did not want to go to work. Um, I was um, outsourcing everything in my life. I was seeing my son maybe two hours a day after running around and being angry, upset all day. Um, I did not have quality time with him or with my husband. And actually we were eating out pretty much every day not because we necessarily wanted it, I love cooking, but because we didn't have time for anything else. So um, I always felt like I was running, I was you know, in a job that had no meaning at that time, um, that glorified overwork as a badge of honor. So it just wasn't working out. So in one word, unsustainable. So one day I had enough and I quit. And that's what, what I call practice one. At that time it wasn't called courage. Um, I didn't even know what it was. Um, Many told me that I had acted too emotionally, that I wasn't really thinking through this, and I really didn't. I just took a risk because I needed to spend some time figuring out, figuring out what I wanted to do. So I quit. I felt vulnerable. Um, I felt lost. I felt um, a mess. Um, but at the same time, it felt so liberating to be able to really start thinking about myself and the things that were important to me and my family at that time, even though I didn't really know what it was. So I let go of the control. I felt uncomfortable. I had to grieve even for, for a while, this, uh, this sensation or feeling of failure. Um, and I really have to start being accepting that I wasn't perfect and I really, that I couldn't be perfect, that nobody was perfect and, and that I wanted to be a little bit more myself. So that is the first practice of courage. Um, I love Brene Brown um, and she has been, she's my mentor without her even knowing that, but um, um, I, I follow her. I have learned so much from her books, her work for, workbooks. And a lot of what I'm gonna share with you today is based on some of the research that she has done and some of the tools too, or some things that I have used that have helped me that they are recommended by her. So I, um, I, I, encourage, I encourage you to uh, read her. 
and the the word courage comes from the from the Latin word core, right? And it means hard. And really, it 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 means deciding to take a risk, even when you don't know what the outcome is going to be. And it also means showing up as you are, but accepting that for that to happen and for that for that to be meaningful connection, you also have to understand that it's going to be a little bit of pain. Um, and that was exactly what was happening to me. Again, at that time, it wasn't called courage. It was, it didn't even have a name. I was, I was struggling. So um, please, if you can move the slide. Um, so we're not going to have time, of course, in this, in this presentation to go a lot into reflecting and pausing, but I would highly recommend you to start looking at Brene Brown's vulnerability um, definition and some of the work um, that she has done. And I'll share with you some slides um, um, in the other, in the other, um, in, in a few moments. So if you want to go to the next, please. So my second, my second practice was self-compassion and really um, this was, this has been a long journey that I believe that, um, particularly women, but for me, particularly, I guess I shouldn't generalize. Um, it's something I, I need to practice every day and it's really being kind to yourself. Um, I have to, we have to move from really self criticizing every decision we make to really giving us a little bit more grace. Um, and not judging ourselves without understanding what we're going through and what we're living through. And that was hard for me. I really, I, I really struggled with it. I thought that I was really a failure, right? So I had to practice self-compassion. Um, so for me, what did I do? Um, which is kind of what I have in every practice, exactly what I did during that time from like May till July when I created my company. So I, I started uh, going to therapy to practice mindfulness. Um, I started journaling. I started an intentional gratitude journal as well. Um, I took time to rest and exercise. I decided to have really quality time with my son over the summer. Um, and I practice, I continue practice, 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 pausing myself, asking others to help me recognize when I'm not being self-compassion, when I'm not being kind to myself and giving myself grace, because I have to give myself permission uh, to be imperfect. And that's not something that we learn as women or as overachiever women or as individuals and human beings in general. So. Um, that's what I did with my practice too of self-compassion. The next slide is going to show you um, a self-compassion um, test that I found during the, during the work with um, with Brene Brown's books. And um, I believe Magda or the student is going to be able to um, put the 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 link there for you to take the self-compassion test. It's very interesting. It's very simple and easy to read. Take some time to take it and see where are some things that you can do to cultivate your self compassion. It also has some activities. So again, it's a really, really good tool that I, I have used and I have seen that I have grown a little bit in some areas that needed, I needed some improvement. So my third, if you can go to the next slide, please. So the next practice that you, if you remember my will is self reflection. So. Self-reflection is really the mental process used to grow your understanding of who you are, uh, what your values are, and why you think, feel, and act the way you do. So for me, it was really looking inward, starting to think about uh, my values, what was important to me, what I really wanted to spend my time, what I wanted my legacy to be, um, and how I did that um, is that I, you know, I, I tune out the noise. Particularly, I started to say no more. Um, I gave myself time, a space, um, silence to really hear what I was thinking, hear what I was thinking, pay attention to it. Um, you know, I'm a person of action, so I, I took the strength finder. I took a professional courage a workshop. I continued with my coach and said, in mindfulness. Um, I reflected on my values and my purpose, which in my case, uh, I feel like they have been pretty steady, even though sometimes they are misaligned to what I'm doing. So my values are family, meaningful work, authenticity, and personal growth. And, and I'll, also I'll share with you later, those are the ones that uh, allowed me to reinvent myself. Um, 
I also started having conversations with family and close friends about who I am, how they see me, what are some, almost like a SWOT analysis, right? Like what, what are some strengths, what are some opportunities for growth and what are the things that they would see me um, 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 as doing maybe successfully or, or, or as, a, as a purpose, as a priority to get maybe aligned to my values. Um, I also had started increasing my awareness of my family history and my cultural background. I was born in Chile. I was born and raised in Chile under dictatorship in the early 80s. And I started understanding a little better, a more meaningful, in a more meaningful way, how those things were impacting my life and, and, and the way that I worked, that I loved, that I lived my life. Um, and, you know, continue with uh, our gratitude uh, journal. We haven't done it in a while, but I'm, I'm trying to be very intentional about being thankful for uh, the things that we have in our life versus just always criticizing, which is always the, the place that I, I, I tend to go. Um, so that was the practice three. And then as I moved along, I started, you know, with practice four. So if you can please go on the slide. So the practice four was what I call reinventing. And this is my own definition of reinventing as giving yourself permission to dream about who you want to be and what you want to do based on your values and your purpose. So for me, it was really at the end of the day, thinking about the commonalities, um, the intersection uh, where my, of where my values were, um, making a meaningful impact and what my experience was because I love what I have done over the years since I arrived uh, to Cleveland. So I wanted to find something that kind of was the common denominator. Um, what we did or how we did that, how I did that was um, with my husband at some point we did um, what it's, I know now it's called like a financial inventory or a minimum viable lifestyle and we started better understanding what we needed to lead the life that we wanted to live and actually we, we learned a lot along the way so that way I knew exactly what I could afford and what I couldn't afford doing. Now I totally understand and admit that that's a, I was in a very privileged situation that I could quit my job. Um, and I know that that's not for everyone, but in my case, it was we were able to do that, and it allowed me to um, have this process of reinventing myself. I also developed a network inventory and skills inventory, um, and as I said, I, I tried to, you know, allow myself to dream a little bit about what I wanted to do based <laughs> on these three pieces. I started to get excited and get nervous. Um, and I started to feel a little bit vulnerable. Um, so if you can move to the next slide, uh, please, Magda. So um, I want to bring you back for for a minute here to, you know, the 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 circle that I show you. So the practices were from you know courage, self compassion, self reflection, and reinvention. And I'm in at the reinvention phase. So. What happened next, um, if you can go on the next slide. Is that I went back to, you know, this cycle, right? I went back to uh, practicing courage now knowing a little bit more about it. And I created and founded and more my, my consulting company that I, it's my, my other baby. And I get a little, um, emotional when I share this because it was a lot of a lot of thinking, a lot of reflection um, and a lot, a lot of support from so many people um, in my family and close friends and people that love me. So um, I, I, I was vulnerable. I decided to um, open up, uh, start my own business, being authentic, owning my voice. Um, and I really acted on my previous practices. So I went to the Hispanic Business Center to talk about opening my business. I incorporated and more consulting with the state of Ohio. I set boundaries and protected my schedule. And I don't want you to get confused thinking that this is work balance, right? That from eight to three, I work and from three to bedtime, I, I leave. No, really the reality is that all, the, all of it, it's my life. And I want to make it work for me in the way that I want you to make it work for you. It's, there is no, not, 
one thing without the other. There is all of it is for life. Um, so I set bound, I set the boundaries and protected my schedule. And then in July, when I announced it, that very same day, I got my first client. And then in August, I got my second client. I didn't even know what I was doing at that time. And I got a few clients. So, um, that has been the process. Uh, as I said, it, it, to me, it's almost like a cycle. It's a circle just because. Um, you know, when COVID hit, for instance, I had to go back over that cycle again and kind of, you know, have the courage to open up, to close down my business, to focus on my son, and then, you know, self-compassion, self-reflection, and then reinventing myself again and going fully virtual and, you know, dealing with all of these challenges as well. Um, you know, and then last year I had to go over this cycle again because I had a really bad burnout. Uh, during Hispanic Heritage Month, the time where I'm the busiest with my company, and I realized that I was being misaligned with my values and my priorities, and I had to go by, go back, go at, around the cycle again to start understanding how I could make changes. So, this is, um, this is kind of what my life. And if you can go next, um, so I found as I was, um. You know, looking for a nice quote, I like to finish with a nice quote. I found this one that ref uh, resonated a lot with me. Um, there is no such a thing as work life balance. As I say, it's all life and the balance has to be within you. Um, and I think that it's crucial. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, to me, it has meant going over that cycle of practices over and over and be true to myself when I'm, you know, feeling like I'm failing or feeling that I'm not perfect or feeling that I'm not being self-compassionate and feeling that I'm not uh, going with my purposes and my values. Um, if you can go next, please. So my life as this today, um, I love these pictures. I'm sharing them everywhere. I spend time with my son. I spend time with my husband. We go to Chile to spend time with my parents. Um, and I also make a meaningful contribution to my community um, with some of the programming and the consulting that I do. So um, this is who I am. And, and you know, this is how I have decided that um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave, right? And will it change? Of course. Will I have to go over and over? via those um, cycles, for sure. Will my priorities change? Probably when Teddy, my son, maybe doesn't wanna be around me to, to that much anymore. But for now, this is what it's working. And I'm learning every day um, that, you know, I have to be open to, to that cycle uh, every time. Next, please. So the last piece before I leave you today, I know we have about six minutes left, is um, the concept that I realized um, was the concept that I was try I'm trying to leave with, it, which is again from Brene Brown, wholehearted living. And it's really, um, as it says here, um, engaging in our lives from our place of worthiness. Um, it means cultivating courage, compassion, and connection to wake up in the morning and think no matter what gets done, I'm enough. And it's going to be saying I'm imperfect and vulnerable and many, many times afraid, but that doesn't mean that I'm not brave and worthy of love and belong. I love what Brene Brown says about that. I love that she's really encouraging us to be vulnerable and courageous and imperfect. And I don't think that that's being said enough. Um, so, um, in the next slide, as of course, you probably already can tell with, with this with this short presentation, I have another inventory that I would like to share with you if you have time to, to do it. it. It just has practices, more practices than the one that I shared today. Her entire research uh, made her have like 10 practices. And then you look at the ones that you're cultivating already. Um, it's like a barometer. So you see the ones that you're cultivating and maybe the some, some others that you might need to cultivate um, a little more. So it's a very um, visual, good visual tool that you can use to start understanding how you're living your life. Um, and lastly, um, um, I have someone speak uh, in Spanish, actually, <laughs> which is it's okay. I, I hope it's not interrupting everyone else. Um, so the last slide, if you want to go next, please. Um, are just some of the resources that I uh, would like to share with you. As you can see, 
heavy on Brene Brown. I, I, she has changed my life. Um, and um, Uncolonized Latinas is another book that I, my friend Valeria Aloy just released. She's originally from Argentina, and it's really around understanding our cultural background, our history as Latin American countries, and how that has impacted our mindset and how we can change those mindsets to really succeed and rise together. So this is this is me. This is my story. I really hope it it's going to be able to help you, provide you with some tools and some guidance to start living your life without um, trying to be too perfect. So thank you. Gracias a todos. Hello, this is Franciela, my student. I just want to first of all, thank you, Marcia, for being so vulnerable and sharing your life, your experiences with us. And in this way, we can learn from it. And thank you, everybody else, for being here. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks.